Yeah. All right, let's go through this. So this is the missing lecture for those who are not here. I'm trying to record this for you guys. This is summer 2018, week four. And here we go. The abdominal examination part one, inspection. So you won't have to do anything, but you will have to answer questions from this. So you do need to know some of this stuff like this, which you need to know tomorrow anyway, probably for your CCP exam. Uh, I think I already went over that. Right, left, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. Oops, bell arc. Thank you very much. Okay, how to percuss. Remember that's gonna be on your test. Remember the plexor and the plexometer. The plexor strikes the plexor, plexometer uh, at the dip, the middle finger. We went over that. And you can read through that. Uh, remember what you're trying to create when you bang on that finger? That is the percussion note that you're making. And remember to establish a rhythm, one, 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 or one, two, three, one, two, three. But give it a pause where you can move. We went over that stuff. And remember the actions like flicking your, like Steph Curry shooting a basket. The action is at the wrist. You don't move your whole arm when you're percussing. That's practice. We already practiced week one. All right, inspection. So this is from Bates, which is a board book. I like Bates. Uh, so, and Seidel and Jarvis follow along pretty well with this. So make sure the, pa the room is warm, and this is ideally, right? Uh, a patient is relaxed, you don't want them nervous, have them go to the bathroom, you don't want their bladder to be full, because that could uh, give you a false positive when you're percussing down there. And explain to the patient that you're gonna be uh, evaluating, and uh, you know, you start with, we don't have to go through inspection and all that, but just say we're gonna, you're gonna be examining their abdomen. And then it's important these days to get informed consent. Do I have your permission? And then we'll say yes. Okay, patient will be supine. You'll have their arms folded across their chest, uh, preferably, uh, or you can put the patient's arms down on the side if you want. The skin will be exposed between the xiphoid and the symphys pubis. In lab, we're not gonna go down quite that low. I think that's a little low for us, but you wanna be able to get down those lower quadrants. Question? Yeah, uh, we were told to bend the knees as well. That's coming, that's coming. Hang in there, hang oh, in there. Uh, so there's the... There's the target area, hands folded. Okay, so the patient has to be comfortable. Uh, there's a test. I think it's a good idea to bend the knees anyway. That makes them more comfortable. Or put a pillow or a couple pillows under their knees and that makes them relaxed. Um, you can put a pillow under their neck as well. If you don't, if their legs are straight, sometimes their gut is guarded and they are, they're tensing all their flat muscles in their rectus abdominis muscles and so you want them as relaxed relaxed as possible. Okay. And make sure you warm up the stethoscope, warm up your hands so you don't so don't jerk. Right now we're just inspecting though. Make sure again those abdominal muscles are relaxed. How do you tell if they're relaxed? You can take your fingers and try to slide them under their lumbar spine. If they're relaxed, you won't be able to get them. If they're tense, they're gonna be arched, unless they have a you know, big, big uh, lordotic curve or something. You shouldn't be able to slide your fingers under there if they're relaxed. Uh, and then before you start, ask them or look at your notes where their areas of pain are so you can examine those later on. And then here's the sequence. This is good stuff for board material. Uh, so you want to go in this sequence. You do inspection first, auscultation is second, percussion is third, palpation is last. There's two parts to the palpation. There is a superficial and a deep palpation. And then after you're done with this, you can go into the special testing to assess the liver, the spleen, uh, look for aneurysms, and we'll get into all that stuff later on. Why do you auscultate before percussion and palpation? So you don't mess anything so you, Yes, you don't disturb any of the bowel or any of the natural gut sounds. Uh, you want to be able to listen to those. Because in thoracic exam, it's a little different. We don't, we don't do this order there. And then we'll be examining the liver, the spleen, the kidneys, and the abdominal aorta 
uh, later in the exam. You should try to stand on the right side of the patient and you're going to inspect the skin first. With your eyeballs, you're going to search all the four quadrants looking for general contour, symmetry. Look for any scars, write those down in your notes. Striae, what's striae? Stretch marks. Stretch marks. A Cullen sign, what's that? Ectopic pregnancy. They may have some bleeding down in the right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant. It's classic of an ectopic pregnancy uh, where some blood gets loose in there. That's Cullen. You should know that. Or you haven't had your GI, your uh, your uh, OBGYN class yet, have you? I'm not sure when that's coming. That's coming pretty soon, though. But that's Cullen sign. Gray Turner sign. We'll talk about that when we get to pancreatitis. That's a very ominous sign. That's blood. That's remember the ankle we saw today, the bruised ankle. It's that ecchymosis, but it's in the flanks. It's from a pancreas that is it really upset and inflamed and leaking blood. Uh, it's a very dangerous type sign. Indicates hemorrhagic pancreatitis. We'll talk about that when we get to that. Also look for dilated veins. Could put medusa around the belly button. Dilated veins indicate portal hypertension. Um, look for rashes, take note of those, or ecchymosis, we said that already. Uh, umbilical veins, again, can put medusa. Uh, visit, what's this one? Visible peristalsis, what the heck is that? What can you see? If you can actually cease peristaltic waves, that's not a good sign. Uh, that could indicate that the patient, and they have stomach pain as well, that could mean an intestinal block. And when that occurs early on, when uh, the poop gets stuck and it can't get through for whatever reason, the intestines can get very forceful and they go into these strong peristaltic waves trying to blast through the block. It doesn't last forever, it kind of peters out. Uh, but if you ever see that, they go to the ER, that's a really bad sign. Blocks can be dangerous. Uh, pulsations, you shouldn't be able to see an aneurysm, that would be another bad sign. Sometimes around the xiphoid, if you look closely, especially in thin people, you might see a pulsation there. That's normal, don't worry about that. But if you see one down by the belly button, um, that's not, you shouldn't see something like that. Okay, note the general contour. Do they have a round abdomen, a flat abdomen? Is it pr protuberance, protuberant, like a beer belly? Or scaphoid, does it go in? So note any of that stuff. Most common cause of a protuberant abdomen is fat accumulation. And remember, scarpa's fascia, campers and scarpas. Uh, so you can get an accumulation down there. That would be in campers, not scarpas is underneath campers. Uh, so that would be in campers fascia holds the fat, right? Scarpa is the thin membrane underneath, so that's backwards. Um, stri again, you can see some stri. Actually, we're gonna go down a rabbit hole, I think. Let's go down a little rabbit hole, take a look at stri here. Some wicked stri called stretch marks. Uh, very common in pregnancy and puberty. During puberty, 25% of girls are affected, 10% of guys. When guys first start lifting weights, teenagers, it's very common for them to get stretch marks right in the axilla, and they'll think, oh my God, what kind of disease? And they're just, they're just stretch marks. Don't exactly understand why they occur, but they're no big deal. Never go away. No, I still have all mine from, I haven't lifted weights in forever. Uh, stride distension, some other causes. Uh, if you're a duff beer drinker like Homer, um, anything that stretches the skin out in older people, you can get it from that. Uh, if you have a giant tumor, if you're pregnant, you can get them as well. Hormones can have an association with these as well, uh, especially something called Cushing syndrome and Cushing's. Are you guys familiar with that? I think that might be on your test tomorrow. Yep. Um, remember Cushing syndrome is, they're both increased cortisol, but remember the difference between Cushing syndrome is from something, anything other than a pituitary tumor. It's usually a tumor of the adrenal gland itself. There's other causes, but Cushing's disease is a pituitary tumor uh, which secretes ACTH. That stimulates the adrenal gland uh, to produce cortisol amongst other stuff. Some other increased risk factors are Marfan's and the other connective tissue disorder 
these people have uh, increased striae as well. Some people, they just happen, like bodybuilders and young kids lifting weights. Uh, Long-term use of corticosteroids can also do it. And they, here's what they look like, it's super common. And they begin as like a bluish reddish cut mark. They can occur in the axillary region here in the butt, abdomen, flanks, breasts. Uh, and they may never completely resolve. The pathophysiology, we still don't understand what causes them. Um, they, if you do a biopsy of them, they're filled with elastic fiber way more than normal. So it's got something to do with elastic metabolism, we think, but they still haven't figured out the exact cause of them. Diagnosis, you don't really need to do any special tests uh, because they're just by looking, you can tell that they have the condition. But if they do have them, you think Cushing's pituitary tumor, if they have headaches, uh, Marfan syndrome. If they're a young person, you got to start thinking about these other associations with them. Uh, they're pretty tough to treat. Uh, there's some expensive creams that pregnant people are sold. They don't work. Uh, the only thing that kind of works is tretinoid, which is prescription, uh, but it is still not considered safe for pregnancy, so I wouldn't recommend pregnant people trying that. There's a good old pendulous abdomen. Um, what can you say about that? Not tympanic, so if you percussion, or we're not doing percussion now, but it's not gonna be the nice tympanic note that a normal person has. It's gonna be a little bit duller. Uh, that's this when it overhangs like that. That's called the panis or the fatty apron tissue. They want you to lift that up and check underneath it. Uh, for inflammation, there could be a hidden hernia hiding under there. So or put your gloves on and lift that thing up. Or sandwich. Or sandwich. <laughs> I heard a story of uh, one of my friend's moms was a nurse, and there was some lady who came in with super obese, had some sort of like weird skin rash. Thought it was like infected, and then they basically pulled up her fat rolls and found like a piece of lunch meat that was in there. Oh my gosh! Hole. That was a hole. <laughs> 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 See, there's the case in point. Yeah, Lift yeah, up this so panis formation because yeah, right. you never know what's hiding under there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what about gas distension? Gas can do the same thing. Sometimes it's hard to tell apart gas from a pendulous abdomen. Um, so the percussion note of gas will be tympanic, if not uh, hypertympanic. Fat will not be. That's one way to tell them apart. Uh, some causes of gas are food allergies, especially lactose intolerance, overeating, intestinal obstruction. There's a bunch more of those things. Could be a giant tumor. A tumor will be dull in percussion. I know you won't be able to tell. We're not percussing yet, uh, but it will be dull. So here they're trying to say, so this is the big tumor region that's dull. Around the periphery, this is awful big tumor, but around the periphery, you'll sometimes get your normal tympanic percussion note there. Observing, it'd be hard to, to differentiate all this. Yeah, everything I said there. Be careful, really extended bladder. If they haven't peed in a long time, it may pretend to be a mass here where you lose your tympanic note down here. So you should ask them if they went to the bathroom or maybe an early pregnancy could do that as well. Uh, thin patients could notice a pulsation. We said that already. Um, could be abdominal aortic aneurysm. We'll talk about more when we get into palpation on that. Serous fluid is interesting. People with liver disease can get a lot of fluid back up to here. So when you're inspecting them, you can kind of see their flanks bulging and their stomach a little more flat. You can check that out further by per percussing, and the percussion note will be kind of a circular tympanic note. So you can percuss in a circle out from the umbil umbilicus this way. If you have a pen, you can mark it where it turns into a dull note and you can kind of map out where the fluid is. And then to confirm, you flip the patient into one of the decubitus positions, uh, and now this should all change. If it's fluid, it'll drain to the downward side, and the topward side will go back to being a tympanic, and it won't be dull. Right now it's dull because it's filled with fluid. So that's one way to differentiate uh, that liver disease, like cirrhosis of the liver, hepatitis. Anything that backs up the portal system can do that. And again, it may be difficult to 
uh, tell a large tumor, especially for an inspection, versus fat, versus pregnancy. The bulging flank thing, if you put them in the decubitus position and that bulge disappears, that could be a sign uh, that, it's, that it's ascites from backed up portal system. And then when we palpate the liver, the liver's gonna be super tender to palpation. I'll show you a cool video on that when we get to, when we get to that. So we kind of talked about this, how you can percuss out to try to mark out where the dullness is. So this is all fluid bulging out, and this is where there's no fluid, normal tympanic note. Where it should never be dullness. The normal percussion note of the abdomen is tympanic. tympanic. So you should never have dullness. It'll make you nervous if you find dullness. Okay, could put Medusa, again, if they have cirrhosis of the liver, there's a traffic jam in the liver, the blood is backing all the way up the portal system, it can go into the periumbilical veins, and it can get really, really nasty looking. Uh, so that's an example of could put Medusa. He's probably got not only the, the portal system involved, but he's probably got the caval system. Vena cave is probably backed up somewhere as well, because it looks like you know that's coming down from internal thoracic artery up here. So he's got he's probably got portal hyper or he's probably got um, pulmonary hypertension. Looks he's like he's skinny. He's probably COPD or something like that. And the traffic jam is going all over. Probably be up his jugulars. Probably be sticking way out like crazy. Uh, but yep, that's a bad sign. Okay, short and sweet. Make sure you study the stuff with the stars only for your lab. And that is it. We'll see you, I don't know when I'll see you. Probably tomorrow. Yeah. So my roommate, Nick, who's the <laughs> he told me a couple, probably like last week, he went drinking out with his friends over the weekend and he came back the next day and he complained to me about like a bruise that he had, like right about here. And he said that he, he, he didn't remember because he,